Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. So glad that you're here on this beautiful Christmas Eve. How blessed we are to be in your house, Lord. I welcome each one of you and pray that you'll be blessed by all that you see and hear and experience this evening. Please call for the stand, uh, stand for the call to worship, which is in your hymnal, number 268. Rejoice with exceeding great joy. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 270, Joy to the World.
lighting of the Christ candle. The other candles, the prophecy candle, the Bethlehem candle, the shepherd's candle, and the angel's candle all point to this one in the center of them all. This candle reminds us that Jesus is the spotless Lamb of God sent to wash away our sins. Just as the wise men worship Jesus, so we gather to worship the wonderful Savior. The reading for this evening is from Matthew, the second chapter, verses 7 through 11. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go! and make a careful search for the child. As seen as you find him, as soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. And they had heard the king. They went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child, and with his mother Mary, they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and incense and myrrh.
Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we gather here this evening to worship you. Father, you have done a great miracle for us. This evening we contemplate and think about that first Christmas Eve. And it brings our attention to the birth of your son. The one with whom you enjoyed all that you had before the creation together in a bond of love. And then you spoke the word and creation came into existence. Lord Jesus, we read in your word that it was you who created. Father, you've given your son to be and to do your will. Father, I pray that our hearts would quiet and our minds would focus. At this time, on the great mirror, God becoming man, just like each of us, in order to save us from our sin. Thank you, Father, for this great moment in which we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Fill our hearts with your Spirit as we enjoy all that has been given to us here this evening. Might you receive all the glory and praise. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. We will now stand and sing the doxology. Baby, 
with the element of the supernatural that occurred that evening. I want to talk about four miracles briefly that happened that night. First of all, the miracle of divine performance. The miracle of divine performance. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. If we accept the Word of God, the Bible, to be the Word of God, we're obliged to believe in the supernatural birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. The process of his birth was natural in that Mary had a baby boy. But the conception was divine. It was the seed of the woman, which is described in Genesis chapter 315 to begin with, united by the Spirit of God with the life of the Father to produce the incarnate Son of God. Dr. Luke records it this way, the Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. What a challenge this is to our hearts. No one, no one can afford to ignore the person who was born into the world in this unique way. What God has done is truly miraculous. The incarnation of God in the person of Jesus Christ, His Son. The miracle of divine performance. The miracle of divine providence. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Have you ever thought about the timing of the circumstances that surround the birth of Christ? It's amazing. The whole event speaks of a supernatural overruling of providence. According to historians, this was the very first census of this kind that was taken. Little did Caesar Augustus know that God was using him to fulfill God's will. Divine providence. It was Caesar Augustus who called for the census. And Mary, being with child, had, was forced to leave Nazareth to go to their ancestral city of Bethlehem. In addition to all of this, the whole world had been prepared for the coming of Christ. Roads were in place. Even the method of crucifixion was in place for the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shakespeare said, there is a tide in the affairs of men. We might add to that, in the tide of God's affairs, this was the right moment for the coming of Christ into human history. The miracle of divine providence, the miracle of divine prophecy. Again, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Out of the 333 prophecies, in the Old Testament, concerning the first advent of Jesus Christ, many of those were filled at his birth. Think of it. Prophecies given in the Old Testament, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years before, that were 
fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ coming to this earth. That's a miracle, ladies and gentlemen. We've spoken about the hypothetical numbers of possibilities that the fulfillment of these prophecies should be fulfilled in this one person. It was prophesied that he would be born in a specific city at a specific time. It was prophesied that his mother would be a virgin many years ago in Micah 5. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be the ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from old, from everlasting, fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. The miracle of divine provision. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. God has provided for you in the coming of this baby boy. This is personal, ladies and gentlemen. This is for you and about you. Yes, it was for the shepherds. Yes, it was for Israel. Yes, it was for the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When Jesus was speaking to Paul, to Saul, on the road to Damascus in Acts 26, he tells Saul the mission that he had for him. And Saul was to go to open, quote, Acts 26, 18, to open their eyes so that they, that is the Gentiles, may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. It was for Israel. It was for the shepherds. It was even for Mary. And it's for you. He came to his own. He came to his own the nation of Israel, and his own people did not receive him. They rejected him. But to all, meaning all persons, do we have any persons here this evening? And we have a few persons, very good. We have a lot of persons. We've even got some persons watching on Facebook and YouTube. But to all persons who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Ladies and gentlemen, this was for you and for me. Brothers and sisters, we prepare to celebrate the greatest miracle ever seen by mankind greater even than the creation itself, when God spoke the universe into existence. The universe has no soul. This is a greater miracle. The incarnation of the supernatural God coming to us in the form of a baby boy in order to experience what you and I experience. He experienced pain. He experienced hunger. He experienced rejection. He also experienced great suffering, along with joy, happiness, fulfillment, and love, all of which led him to a cross in order to make atonement for
for your sin and mine. God taking upon himself the judgment for our sins, for our transgressions. That is love. The giving of his life. That's why he came as a baby boy. He came to surrender his life for you and for me. There's a story about a man and his small son. They were walking down the streets of a large American city one Christmas Eve during World War II. Quote, the child was delighted to see the many service stars hanging in the windows of homes. Each star proudly proclaiming the fact that a son was in the service of his country. He clapped his hands excitedly as he approached each new star and was totally impressed by those homes with more than one star in the window. As they walked along, they came to a wide gap between the houses. And through that space, the sky was black, and there was a star in the middle of it. Oh, look, Daddy, cried the little boy. God must have given his son, for he has a star in his window. The little boy was right. For nearly 2,000 years ago, God put a star in the heavens to announce the gift of his son that first Christmas day. For the last four weeks, we've been focusing on the Christmas star. What the star was to the wise men from the east, Christmas day is to us. That's the star. Tonight, around the world, 2.4 billion people celebrate Christmas Eve. One third of the world's entire population celebrating the birth, the incarnation of the Son of God. That was the greatest miracle of all time, God becoming a man. The next greatest miracle of all time is when the incarnate baby boy Jesus is born in your heart and mine. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. And when he is, we receive the greatest gift of all, forgiveness of sin and a new life. The miracle of divine performance, God becomes a man. The miracle of divine providence at the right time. The miracle of divine prophecy fulfilling history. The miracle of divine provision for you and for me. Will you do what the wise men did? Will you follow the guiding star? That is, follow the meaning of Christmas and what it really means. Until it leads you to the Savior. Once you have met Jesus Christ, you can never, ever be the same. You never will be the same. The love of God will flood your heart, will flood your soul, and you will know what it means to be a child of God. You'll also do what the wise men did. We will fall on our knees and worship Him. God our Father, Thank you for this marvelous verse. This verse that you have given to us that tells us that a Savior
has been born. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and that's not enough. I pray that each of us, those that are here, those that are listening, would open up our hearts and allow you to be born anew in our hearts. You have done a miraculous thing. The miracle of the Christmas star. Pray that each one of us would follow it and do whatever it takes to understand what it means. Bless the remainder of this service, we pray. Lord Jesus, in your name, amen. Amen.
Father God, we thank you for this life that you have given to us, that we might in turn give it back to you. Help us trust in you, Lord Jesus Christ, in every single way we can. Help us to love you more and more as the days go on. Bless us now as we each go our separate ways until we meet again in your grace. Amen. Amen.